brought to you by GTA. We start with you. The time has come for the voters to decide who they want as our next elected officials. I'm visiting a few of the northern polling sites where there's the largest amount of registered voters. Voters in Digo and Dededo at the ready. I decided to vote because I want good leaders. Here at FB Leon Guerrero Middle School, Jenna Lynn Abinales is a mother who shares why her vote matters. I want good leaders in there to really help us grow the economy and also be able to um, fight for our women's rights because I do have two daughters as well um, with everything that's been going on with Roe versus Wade but as well as um, supporting a more healthy economy so if we have the right leaders in office the better for us to grow and not stay stagnant especially with the pandemic where um, we were stagnant for so long where uh, we see that the tourism industry hasn't um, helped us as much as we wanted to where we thought it would be, but now we have to look for something that's different. Um, we can't do the same things we did before. Each one walking in and out with ease, deciding who will lead Guam. Just to try to make a difference. Anything, yeah. what qualities are you looking for in your next elected officials? Nothing last year. Hi, why did you decide to come and vote? I just want to. I need to vote, making sure our voices get heard. Yeah, what issues would you like to see politicians address? Gosh, uh, education more. They're promising the new hospital, maybe, and better um, school, um, like the Sanchez and uh, the rest. This wouldn't do the job, this all. Any issues you see in the community you'd like addressed? Nothing that I can do about, anything about, but... Oh no, I will say one thing, all these dogs, that's all I'm going to say. All these dogs, get rid of them. And outside of the voting sites, supporters for the gubernatorial teams rally for All In and a new season. Well, they're the best choice for this election and they have a plan that they've achieved and they have a plan moving forward and so we have a very prosperous, promising, encouraging four years to look forward to. And they're the best choice on the ballot for governor and lieutenant governor. Because they're very good people and they're honest. And that's what I like about them. So please come out and vote. Please vote Camacho Ada. Tonight we'll find out who the voters elected into office. In the meantime, we'll toss it over to Matsuki Hirayama, who's visiting the central polling sites. Thanks, Anna. I'm here at the central polling sites to speak with the people of Guam as they cast their ballots this general election. Let's take a look on how they're feeling this morning. The central part of the island brought a flurry of voters out this election day. I'm a, a long resident of Guam and I still see the same thing for the last eight years when I didn't vote the last time. So I voted today because it's our right, a privilege for us, but I really look forward to seeing some sort of changes because eight years to me has not much. We need to make sure that the people that get voted for the Board of Education are the ones who are responsible for the schools and that they try to do what they can. and. Uh, uh, those who are in charge of power and water, we're electing them again today. They get in, they better do what they can to make our power and water rates affordable. We checked out Jeff K. High, the home of the Islanders, where both candidates running to be the next governor of Guam cast in their ballots. Fantastic. I'm very, very happy and um, just grateful, you know, to the good Lord for the journey that uh, he's taken me on together with Tony, of course, my wife, uh, Joanne and Annette, Tony's wife, and all the wonderful people that we've met um, throughout the campaign. So very happy. I just voted and I feel very uh, optimistic and I feel very confident and I feel very uh, satisfied that I've done my duty as a civic uh, citizen uh, for the people of Guam. Former Governor Felix Camacho, the challenger, and incumbent Governor Lou Leon Guerrero speaking to the media about the issues. We got to take it beyond just Guam. This is a, a regional and international problem. The drugs is so those involved in, in the drug trade right now, um, they're part of a large organization that is beyond the shores of Guam, and we're going to need federal assistance to tackle this. You can't be complaining if you're not there being part of the solution, and part of your solution is voicing your right to vote and select those candidates who you feel uh, will lead our island forward in the many challenges ahead of us. On the opposite end of the island, 
education, infrastructure, the military buildup, and more are just a few of the issues voters we spoke with at Warden Charlin Pago share they want leaders to focus on. I'm making sure that um, you know the the important things such as public safety, education, our hospitals, um, you know, are are paramount, and you know, and that the uh, these candidates keep their promises, you know, with their platforms that they're going to make this a priority. Excited, yeah. kind of um, wondering where the future of Guam goes, but uh, very excited. And do you have anything you want to say to our candidates or any issues you want fixed? Yeah, I think both of them, are both parties, both uh, the governor and uh, Felix Camacho and uh, Luli Angaro, both camps are passionate. They care about Guam. So I think uh, for me, there are certain things that, uh, that I would like to see. Uh, in our future and hopefully the best person wins. As you just saw, people are pretty vocal here in the central polling sites about the issues they want fixed here on Guam. In the meantime, we'll toss it over to you, Daniel, in the south. Thanks, Mitsuki. The southern part of Guam is no exception. One after another, voters are seen entering and leaving the polling site. We caught up with voters in Jotnya rules, each sounding off on issues they want addressed by those running for office, like retired teacher Paz Padua. I know what is happening in the classroom, so we really need more materials and more uh, support for the teachers. Now they gave them the race, right? But we, get, we need to support them, you know, construction of more classrooms. She knows it's been years since our island's public schools received any type of renovation. For Jotno voter Frank Ishizaki, a key topic he wants to address is the lack of community safety. Crime is high, drug abuse is very, very high, and the uh, economy sucks, so we've got to do better. For crime and drugs, I think we've got to rethink how to do crime and drugs, and we, I, I think there's some things we need to do. Even the prison, recidivism very high, we've got to find different ways to deal with convicts, and, I, and I'm, I'm into community corrections. I want more prisoners going home, I'm hiring more parole officers and more probation officers, and if they can't comply, then we lock them up. We saw a similar scene around the south, including over in Hoggett. Now let's toss it up to the Northern Marianas, where our regional correspondent, Tomas Maglonia, is checking in with voters there. 